Oh, sh- Hey, what's up guys and girls? Uh, doing some editing for my employer right now. And I wanted to take a quick break to show you guys this shot from just last week where we had a pretty good arc flash. Yo. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to show it for, for two reasons. One, because when you slowed it down and went frame by frame, it was pretty well to see the progression of the flash as it went from lighting up the ground somehow, even though the fault was on top of the can, to completely blinding out my camera and then throwing sparks all over the place. So one huge benefit of having a smartphone, pretty well everyone's got a smartphone nowadays. A lot of times when I'm working in the field and there's a fault or closing the line and we didn't necessarily find a problem. You don't want to be staring directly at an area where there's a potential fault. It's extremely bright. It can cause damage to your eyes. I'll simply roll the camera and if the line does kick back open, I can go back and review the footage on my phone and pinpoint exactly sometimes where the fault was. This has come in handy a few times in one instance working on a 138 kV line where we couldn't quite tell if the two phases or the phase in the overhead guy were close enough to flash over. They were covered in ice. We had a conversation on the phone with our power system operator and decided it wasn't gonna hurt anything to close the line in. If, if it was the ice in the line, the flash would potentially blow the ice off the line. Maybe trip, maybe bump the recloser once and then stay closed in, so. Hey, yeah, we're all clear, go ahead. Yeah, that's exactly where it was. Yeah, right in front of us here. In a situation like that, you don't want to stare directly at the fault. As I said, it can cause damage to your eyes. So you stare at the ground, hold the camera up, and then review the footage. This came particularly in handy. Uh, we had a substation where a high tension fuse blew. We tested everything, everything tested good. We tested the 69 kV lightning arresters. Why it was able to pass all the, the testing procedures and still failed is way over my head. However, when you're dealing with equipment such as a power transformer and it kicks a high tension fuse, there's quite a process to being able to attempt to close that again. You don't want to destroy a half a million dollar piece of equipment. But where I had the video footage, after reviewing the footage, you could clearly see in the video where it was a particular lightning arrestor, a 69 kV lightning arrestor. The footage was enough to keep the powers that be happy enough to cut it clear, close the power transformer back in, and actually reduce an extremely large outage from what would have been several hours to merely another 20 minutes or so as we cut that lightning arrestor clear with sticks and simply re-energize the transformer. So a lot of companies do have restrictions around using your mobile device while at work. So be sure to check with your supervisor, of course. However, there's, there's a ton of benefits to it. Another story, and I wish I could find the footage to this, but we had a bad uh, URD box. It was an underground secondary box in a very rich neighborhood. We, we had to replace the box in the ground. So what we did, myself and my partner, is... We, we went to the local hardware store and bought a tarp. We put the tarp on the ground. We had a, a saw and actually cut the ground out, removed the grass in, in square sections, just like you would with sod. We dug the box up, put a new box in the ground, replaced the sod. It was such a clean job, you couldn't even tell we were there. Brand new box in the ground. There wasn't even so much as matted grass or any mud while we were done. The job was literally picture perfect. Anticipating that we might have problems, I, I took some before photos during and after that were all time stamped on my camera 
And sure enough, a week later, I got a phone call from the supervisor. The, the guy that lived there put in a damage claim to have his front yard landscaped. He sent in some pictures. When I looked at the pictures the supervisor sent in, I couldn't believe it. This guy purposely destroyed his yard. He went and took a shovel himself, went back after we left and dug up, made a mess of the whole area, claiming that we did it and put in a claim to have his entire yard landscaped. My supervisor printed off all the pictures, time stamped, went to see the gentleman at his house, showed him the pictures and called him out straight up. So obviously the damage claim was denied. The guy was pretty embarrassed and, and looked like a, a fool to be frank. So in, in that situation, those, those pictures really saved myself and my partner from being accused of doing something we didn't do. So moving forward over the years, any time I'm in a situation, in fact, most trouble calls, I grab a few before and after pictures just in case there's any damage claims or any question about the job we did. It, it, it really covers my butt for, for liability, having footage of a lot of the jobs that we respond to. So I should be able to edit this video up pretty quick, take a little break from the one I'm doing for my employer, which is taking hours. And I'll get this posted up. Hopefully I'll have some more footage of some stuff in the field for you guys next week. Oh, and the video where we're doing the giveaway, I've, I've been reading through all your comments. Usually I click the like button on them. However, I wanna, I'm leaving them all blank until I go through them to pick my 20 favorites. So we're gonna get done that soon, but the comments guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's, it's the one in the thumbnail with the the branch that's encased in a purple shaded epoxy. So check it out. We're going to be doing that giveaway in another couple weeks. So looking forward to it and we'll see you guys all soon.